So the New York Times forced to issue a correction today. This after an op-ed featured, I mean, big time, yesterday claimed that the gunman who shot Gabby Giffords was inspired by Sarah Palin. Of course, that's a theory that's been debunked for many years. Media bias is raging on. Here to discuss, uh, Ned Ryan and, and Bob Cusack are back. And Bob, uh, you know what I found really interesting is that this is a big glaring uh, article yesterday with the headlines and it was media. And, and of course, the, 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 uh, the correction was small, italicized, fine print that you, know, you needed a microscope to find. More right. humble pie for the New York Times, but it, fe it feels to me that they're smart enough to know that that was a mistake yesterday. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that's that's where I think the media has a, a bad reputation, and it earns it. I mean, if you're going to go after somebody uh, for doing X, Y, or Z, uh, you got to get those facts right, and, and that's where you know. And, and listen, the, uh, you know, I'm part of the media, and and the Hill has made errors before, but when you make errors, you've got to, especially big ones, you have to correct it. And sometimes you have to apologize because some errors are very big. This one was. Ned, I just, but again, sometimes I question whether they're errors or not. And that's where I think the rubber hits the road. Uh, again, the New York Times, this is an old debunked myth that there are smart people there, right. no matter what side of the political aisle they're on. Right. Intentional mistakes. Um, no, I mean, first of all, they probably had to retract it because Sarah Palin was going to sue them for libel. Well, Twitter yeah. went crazy, by the way. As soon as it went well, out there, people right. were like, are you guys nuts? Yeah, yeah, yeah you've got to be kidding. I, I think the thing that people really need to understand, again, it goes back to what Steve Bannon said. The media is acting as the opposition party to Donald Trump and the Republican Party. And I think statistics show this. Harvard did a study about four weeks ago to show the, the, the rate of coverage for the, the last four presidents, negative versus positive. CNN and NBC, 93% negative coverage of Trump. The highest average of the three previous presidents was 60%. They were 33 points higher in their, in their coverage of Donald Trump. And at some point, people are going to start asking, are you acting in, in, in reporting the facts? Are you acting as a propaganda machine for an opposition party? And the other thing I have to tell you about the New York Times, until they repudiate their story from February 14th, in which they hyped the Russian collusion story, which was a fairy tale, I refuse to take them seriously. Uh, Bob, who should we take seriously these days? I mean, quite honestly, um, CNN is a repeat offender. MSNBC has made it their mission to destroy President Trump. The New York Times on the same pa path. I mean, these. Who, who, uh, of course, you're going to say the Hill, but honestly, people who are watching, <laughs> uh, people who are watching, really are conflicted here. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I didn't think there was a, a bias in the media until I was part of the media. And that doesn't mean every political journalist is biased. Um, but, however, it is a fact that most people who go into banking are Republican. And most people who become political journalists are Democrats. And, that, once again, that doesn't mean all, all political journalists or all, all Democrats are biased. But it does creep in. And that's why it's important for uh, editors and reporters to assess themselves and assess uh, their newsrooms to make sure even the word choice. So, sometimes, Charles, it can be subconscious. Sometimes it's not. It's blatant bias. Yeah, I, I think when I think when your site does it, it's it's uh, subconscious, maybe. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it is blatant by many people. It, it, Too many people. It, it is blatant by many people, and I think the thing that I would find at least refreshing is if they would be honest about it and say, you know what, we are high, we are biased. We do have strong opinions, and that's how we're going to report the news instead of trying to portray themselves as objective sources of news. Right.